in with the idea of what want is. I think if I look to my beliefs about what want is, I think I largely gathered the impression that that want to want is not necessarily a good thing. The unpleasant meaning of want is comes from the idea that if I want something, it means that I'm dissatisfied. So, uh, yeah, if I'm, if I'm dissatisfied with what I've got, then I want a new car, or I want something more or other than I already have. So I'm not. It implies that I'm not comfortable or not accepting of my current circumstances or what it is that I have. So that I think that's a sort of historically a, a prevailing view about um, the nature of want, and we sort of have muddied that that word pretty heavily. You know, to say um, that if you want something, uh, that it's do without, like a need that you you know, oh, I want this, and it's it becomes a it's a compulsive type of a feeling that makes you do things that um, don't necessarily make sense. So I'd like to challenge both those ideas of want. Um, in the first instance, uh, I don't think that want means that I'm, sat that I'm dissatisfied. Um, I, when I look at my sense of want, I feel like it gives me a sense of okayness. I, I link want to feeling okay. That um, I can have a want, for example. The reason why it's not doesn't represent dissatisfaction is because I can have I can want. In fact, I would argue that want is there all the time that it is a, a natural appetite. So I'm sitting here with want and I don't have to have anything that I want for. So um, I can have a sense of want and there's not an idea in my head of what it is that I want. So if you separate the two out um, then there is no concept in my mind that it's that I'm dissatisfied with what I have. So that part of it doesn't make sense to me. And secondly, I don't think that want um, is a bad thing. I think that it feels okay. It's like it's like um, I make an analogy of it being like physical hunger, but want might. You know, it might be a mental hunger or um, perhaps an emotional hunger or uh, you know, not just physically based. So in the same sense that I don't think hunger is a bad feeling, it's, it's not a bad comparison because a lot of people who feel hungry interpret that feeling of hunger to mean uh, that they're deprived. So the problem is not with the feeling of hunger, but rather the attitude or belief that it represents deprivation, that you're missing out on something or something has been withheld from you and so hunger is then turned into this undesirable feeling that you know, no one should be hungry type of idea, which, um, which doesn't make sense to me because if you look closely at the feeling of it, it's not a bad feeling. It's okay to be hungry. In fact, it's it's not a not only is it not unpleasant. It's actually quite a, a nice feeling. So similarly with with want, when I feel when I look at my want, so the best place to look at that is before you've used your thinking mind to create an object for the want. I want something, but if I just stay with it at the level of want, and I sense my want. There is nothing discordant about it at all. It's it's an energy, and you know, I'd probably go so far as to say that nothing happens without want. 
nothing at all happens without want. So that makes it the source of my motivation. And arguably, if I give enough, if I give attention to my want, um, it, it is the source of my inspiration. Now, it still requires the thinking mind to add ideas to it for that inspiration to take on form. So, then that's okay. But I would like you to have a look at that, the sense of want in your experience and tell me if you find it to be unpleasant. Um, want, want can become unpleasant for me if, I, if the want is not just there but the wanting to have it. Could I call that need instead of want? Yeah, uh, Oh, you know, we all have needs, though. No, it's not need as much as wanting. Sure. It needs. Mm. Need to eat. Need to Do you eat. need to eat? If you're hungry, if you don't eat, you die. Isn't it a want to eat? Oh, okay, so you're... I see. There's a difference, need and want. See, so if, I, if I look at... Uh, it's, it's a good analogy with, with physical hunger, so... Um, when you feel hungry, it's not unpleasant, and to think um, I'd like some food, that's quite exciting. I mean, there's nothing, I don't find anything unpleasant about wanting to eat and the process of thinking what I'd like to eat and the process of actually obtaining it. Yeah. I think that we're capable of turning wants into needs mm -hmm. by, again, by that same mechanism by which uh, we turn. Um, uh, a hunger into a deprivation. You can take a sense of, of hunger mm. and with your mind make it to be something you, you can't do without. Now if, if you treat the hunger yeah. as something that you can't do without then you have turned it into a need. I have to have that. Yeah. Same with a car. If you turn your want for a car into I have to have that to for whatever yeah. purpose you are. But you can live without a car, but you can't live without food. But do you need food? Is it to the live, need for food live. that makes you achieve it, or is it an a appetite want. for it, a want for it? I think you've got to do something with your conscious mind for it to appear as a need okay. to you. Yeah. So, you know, a good way to look at whether we've got needs is to break it down. This is a little bit of a divergence, but it's, it's a good point, so I'll just say this briefly. If you have a look at um, uh, needs and, and then break it down and say, well, where is the need? So, uh, who has the need? And there's two, there's two obvious components. One is the mental side of it, and the other is the physical side of it. Now, let's just for the moment assume that if you're going to use the word needs let's let's keep it to physical let's say you know, food is a physical need mm -hmm. all right now who has the need you or the body? the body the body okay so when we talk about um if we make the no one actually thinks well very few people if would, uh, would say that they are their body. Generally most people have a sense of themselves which is in some respects independent of the body, that the body is this extra thing that we've been given. Okay, so it, you know, at the very least, at the very most, it's the body that has the need. Um, we have taken that word need and made it uh, you know, a compulsive thing, like you ask yourself when it comes to mental things, do you need love? If you say so move, remove all the physical ones, food, mm -hmm. shelter, air, mm -hmm. okay, clothing, well, that's shelter I guess. Uh, do we have any psychological needs? That, right, so a need essentially means something you can't live without. Mm -hmm. don't, babies will die though if they don't have touch when they're infants. That's physical. Um, well that's still physical and it's debatable. Um, okay. I don't think there's any any compelling evidence that anything psychological um, is 
an outright need, as in can't live without. I mean, people live as hermits, yeah. so you only need one person to live without social contact to to prove that you don't need human contact or you don't need love. People, what you know, about it's mental not a, cruelty? It's not a, an absolute essential to your existence. What about okay. mental cruelty? You can live without that. No, but I mean <laughs> the opposite. Someone well, that's getting mental cruelty, children or whatever, and not getting the love that they need. Uh, the love that they want, again, it's still not proving that you have need. Okay, so if you if you don't get what you want, yes, you are impoverished. I'm not questioning that. What I'm mm -hmm. questioning is whether it's a need or a want. Right, so a need is something you can't do without. And that Food. becomes a, a, a mental thing that makes that... Like makes the, it appear as a need to you. Okay? The minute you think you have to have it and you it's a lack it. without yeah. it, yeah. it's a need. That's right. Mm -hmm. That if it's just a pure want, without the attachment to yes. the object, yes. it feels fine. It's it the feels minute it. you yeah. need it. That's right. Mm -hmm. you've, you've, for your happiness okay. or your survival. All right. So, so consistent with the view that fear is the thing that turns things into unpleasant experiences, then what we've actually done is bring our fear to bear on our natural sense of wanting things, which turns it into a need. Mm. Mm. So, of course I want. Every person wants social contact. We're social beings. Of course we want love, intimacy, all those things. We're not denied those things. So they are, you know, I'm just questioning whether they are absolute requirements of life. Now I think, without spending too long on it, I think there's a sufficient case there that they don't, they're not absolute requirements. So psychologically, we have wants, uh, I think it's reasonable to conclude you have wants and not needs. We so, can take it to the extreme and say, um, is, do we need to take another breath? Yes, and that's where I'm heading then. Mm. Then you've got to say, well, all right, we've said we can have physiological needs, but again, are they needs? Because if you look at the if you look at the body, it doesn't experience them as needs. The, bo the body's wish to breathe and eat is not experienced by the body as a need. The only place you can experience this thing of need is in your mind. Yeah. So the body. It, Again, it's a psychological construct mm -hmm. that we've imposed mm -hmm. on the body. Once we think that we've got needs, we uh, we impose that on our view that the body has need. It has to have food to live, but it doesn't experience it like that. It experiences it as a positive instinct to do what is called for to sustain your existence. That's what it's doing, and all that's done as a positive experience. There is no support. Uh, it's a good example because if we had need, it's not a pleasant experience to feel that you need something, can't live without. Um, as opposed to all those things can still be met. Having food to eat and a place to live are still can be addressed from a sense of want. And I think it's our true nature is the wanting because it fits as a pleasant experience. It doesn't bring any unpleasantness into it. Mm. And the real test for me is the following. And I've never heard anyone answer no to this question. Do you need to live? Sort of an extension of yours. Do you, mm. you, know, do you need to breathe? Well, the answer with breathing is, well, only if, if you want to stay alive, yes. Yeah. But by virtue of that, we are instilled with a want to breathe. That still covers it. You want to breathe. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, if you have a look at your, your instinct now to breathe, do you experience it as need? No. Like do you feel a need to breathe right now? Life. Or do you just want to? It not needs got I, some I, sort I of desperation in it, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah. When we use the word need, I'm not sitting here thinking, my God, I'm going to die if I don't take this next breath. You better. I just have to. Be. If you have I have anxiety. to take this. You don't. If you have anxiety. Anxiety, yes, anxiety. Yeah. 
is it's actually a product of, feel, of need. Yeah, if you feel yeah. this need and desperation, yeah, yeah. then you're going to be anxious about whether you're going to get that, that next yeah. breath or that next meal. Mm -hmm. So again, that's that's you know, that supports the idea that a need is a psychological construct that we've created and it's not actually our natural experience of mm -hmm. any event in life. If I look at this next breath I'm it's about to take, to know I'm looking forward to life. I'm looking... This next breath is going to, you know, extend my my this experience that I'm having. I mm. don't feel any need. It's, it's like mm. you said. I mm. don't feel any need to take this breath. There's no nothing in me saying, Kate, you have to take this breath, mm. or you're going to die, or whatever." You ask yourself the question: Do you need to live? I, I think it's a classic. You don't need to be happy either. Do you need to live? Well, it's only the body that dies. So Arguably, well, that's so, another good point. So then, why do why you need to live? No, it's no. A, I'm sure it's a choice or it's voluntary. You don't need to live. It's mm. a nice thing, and it's most people enjoy it. Or, but we don't feel any need for it. It's just you know bestowed upon us or inherited or however you want to just think of it, it or by grace or whatever or whatever. But nobody actually has ever said, when I've asked that question, I've asked it many hundreds of people now, has ever said, yes, I need to live. Somber way. Yeah. Okay, so can, can I now crazy. reasonably dispense with need and just focus on want? Yep. So, look at your want and tell me, let's take, stick with that one, what for the next breath. We simply want, we don't need to live, but we want to experience the next, or well, this moment. We want to extend this moment that we're experiencing, don't we? You don't feel any need to extend this but moment. But there's no thought. Right. There's no thought. Exactly. And, and I'm, But I'm, is there what? If you look at mm. the experience that you're having now, can you identify a sense of what? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes? I can't, I can't, um, I mean, it's probably Warren is, is right the way he understands the word want, but for me to say there's a want without a thought that supports it, for me the, 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 the idea of want is, I mean, the, the sense of want, I, I can't point to it, I really, unless there's a thought, I want this or that. But the, it's the thought adds the, what it is you want. Yeah. Yes. That's all. But, but the impetus to have a thought or to put an ad, put a, a yeah, thing on must the, be there. I yeah. conclude it. Don't like you get up out of bed without there. thinking? I mean, you. I used to do that. I'd, I'd be waiting cognitively to know when I wanted to get out of bed. I thought something was going to talk to me. Do you want to and blink before I just you get blink? Up. Do you want to think before you think? As in, have a thought. I'm going to think. Well, shit, sure, that's me. No, there's thought. no thought. Yeah. Okay. So you don't need to. So there's think some to have in, want. there's some impetus or mm. energy or power mm. or something that precedes the thought. And uh, I'm saying that when that manifests to you physically, that is what want is. So want is when that when it, when that potential or energy first is expressed as a impetus to, and then fill in the blanks, to do, to think, to walk, and then we bring the thinking mind how to do it. Mm. So that's so, like mindfulness, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So otherwise it's not mindfulness. Yeah, but the, the idea of wanting, that it is, a ha wanting is almost, uh, it shows a direction to me. Some, somehow, a direction to well, want. Try, try to look at it before the direction's added. Like, Free. But then can we call it want at that stage? Oh, we could call it something else. I think want's the right word um, for it, though, because because it leaves me looking mm. for. Now, here's the problem. See, most people, when they look at want, they, they th treat it as a longing for. Mm. But this, my my want is, is what guides me to look at anything or to work something out or... It's like a, an, an appetite. Isn't it right? It's the same. The love, uh, the love to live, or love to yes. living, mm -hmm. or okay. something. Okay, something, something yeah. along those lines. And what about alertness? 
Well, I think you can then extend to a number of other mm -hmm. faculties that they can get quickly involved. But what I'm trying to get <coughs> at is that, for me, want is not an unpleasant experience. Even, even after it has attracted the thought. Yes, if it still hasn't got need in it, then it's a natural flow through mm. of a want for, and then I use my mind to think want for what? What, mm. what is the, you know, water. my mind into? Yeah, my mind interprets mm. this signal want for drink or want for even material things. You know, I want for I'm having a lot of trouble, my car's breaking down a lot, I want to want it fixed or I want a new car. I mean, it's, if, it, if it follows through as a pleasant experience, then the outcome of what it is you attach to the want is fine. You just stay with the so want until it's you not get the, the way to focus on Ah, it. there's another good extension. So she said if you stay with the want and just continue to pursue what it is you want. Mm. And so it's not emotionally driven? No. Mm -hmm. So want is good, okay? I'm not saying greed is good, and that's another misinterpretation of what want is. That if I say I want want something, that it's actually coming from greed. People tend to think that that's greed. I think it's a want to live that I can associate uh, relate to. Yeah. It's just a, a, a wanting a. Yes. You know. That's it. Wanting to live, finish, yeah. and so then, then it that, will. It and will that's a nice it. feeling. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you want to live. It means yeah. you're looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, you, know, so you enjoy not, life. Yes. You enjoy living. So you're not yeah. you're excited about what's yeah. unfolding, this event mm. that's unfolding. Mm. Yes, it brings some challenges mm. at times and mm. facing some other mm. unpleasantries at other people's minds, other you know, needs or you know, unpleasant things that other people mm. have created mm. or that even you have created from stored in memory. Mm. You face those things, but you're not daunted by them. If mm. you if you have a sense of uh, you know, a harmonious sense mm. of want, uh, you want to express yourself. You yes. want to radiate your your yes. existence. Yes. Things like this, which yes. is very generic, and then it finds yeah. a few things yeah. to make them concrete. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which would really help interface with people that um, think they might want yeah. something, and they'll be unhappy without it. Yes. It, well, Instead of engaging and arguing, if you stuck with your want, yeah. that would help give you the insight yes. of what to and do Yes, and the proof of the pudding it. is, if you say then you want something and you're unhappy about not getting it, you've already proven that that's no longer coming from want, because being unhappy is not your natural feeling, it's not a good feeling, so you've done something else with your mind mm. to now create a situation where you're unhappy. Yeah. So want, if I just look at my sense of want, it immediately gives me a feeling of harmony. A feeling of, um, and what it actually, what it leads to for me, is the first feeling I get after I want, if I follow my want, I get to a feeling of like. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. here I am, I, 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 I sense my want, and wherever that want goes, so it goes to listening to noises, then I feel this harmony in mm. the noise, and it is to my liking. Mm. So, so there is a direct link between want and what is liked. Mm. I've done sessions with the jackhammer going on yeah, 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 in yeah. Melbourne Street, and they were doing the street up. Yeah. Um, certainly if you embrace it, and we've mm -hmm. talked about that before, if you can take that, your, your you want to make the, the world a good place, yeah. make your experience of life a good thing, and that's fundamentally what our instinct is prompting us to do with want, make it a good experience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. in the first instance you would then embrace that horrible noise, mm -hmm. and it's, that immediately stops you from getting annoyed by mm -hmm. it. And then you will have the added thought, so now what can I do? Because because there's certain practice, if it's a really loud noise and you can't hear yourself think or talk to somebody, mm. then you've got a situation that you need to resolve and mm. you think quite mm. reasonably and kindly yeah. about yeah. how to do it. Do I shut the window? Do I move into a mm. room out the back? Or, mm. or do I ask the fellows mm. to, you know, when mm. someone's yeah. having an argument, ask them to take elsewhere? Mm. Or, mm. I'm sure the, you know, the workers on the street with their jackhammers probably weren't going to be inclined to mm. to cease working if I had asked them. But 
you still problem solve the situation and in all mm. instances it still mm. is a pleasant experience to you. Mm. If, if want leads to like, because, because that my want has this pro-life sense about it, it really turns everything into experience of what is to my liking. I want mm -hmm. things to be to my liking, so when I encounter something that's not in accord with my liking, immediately I'm still following my liking to turn the noise down, or you know, it's just a natural flow through. Mm. Um, and the the result is to have a life experience that's to your liking, mm. which is what giving your want form. Very good, like it. And yeah, you know, well, what, and what? So, what am I fundamentally, talk, fundamentally talking about there? It is. It's mean this if everything's to my liking, I've got this kindliness to people. I like people. I feel liked. Right? Aren't we pretty close to what's referred to as love, aren't we? The general sense of the word love. I love life. I love, uh, you know, it's just a, a, a good, um, strong feeling about how, how good this life is. Mm.